YouTube. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to yet another Genshin Impact video. Today, we're going to be finishing up the collected miscellany videos that we haven't watched so far. And the next video, we're going to get into the gameplay. We're going to play the game for the first time. Finally, I'm excited to see some more awesome combos. Let's get into the video. Hit that like button for me. Helps me out in the YouTube algorithm. And let's get into the collected miscellany videos part two. Okay, here we are. We left off on Sango no Mia, Secret Tides of the Heart. Let's see what she's about. Regions of Inazuma lies Watatsumi Island. Oh my God! Only to yes. A culture and natural landscape unique in the entire archipelago. Absolutely. According to legend, Orobaxi was Watatsumi I think this is my Island's favorite area region. they've shown so far. Even after it's being so shown, pretty. This god's will to protect the island flowed on in the Sangonomiya clan. The current heir to this bloodline is known as the Divine Priestess. Sanganomiya Kokomi. Look at this! You see that? You see how pretty that is? All is accounted for. Let's move out. Oh, the little waterfish! That's adorable. The role is to serve as the island's leader, as well as commander of its armed forces. God, with the music, the violin. Behind her delicate appearance Stop. lies the mind of a brilliant tactician. She is adept in harnessing the power of Hydro to aid her forces in battle. As their commander, she bravely leads her troops into the fray, sweeping away enemies like sand in the tide. Oh, she's a commander. Kokomi spent her childhood on Watatsumi Island, playing among darting fish and rolling waves. She Look at that, there. man. When Sanganomiya Kokomi is in your party, she reduces swimming stamina consumption for your own party members, making exploration faster. That doesn't sound very useful. Kokomi's normal attack performs up to three consecutive strikes that take the form of swimming fish. That's cool. <laughs> Holding the attack button consumes a set amount of stamina. Oh. And deals AOE hydro damage after Whoa. a short casting time. Tap Kokomi's elemental skill to summon a Bake Kurage created from water that can. Oh, that looks balance. awesome! This ability applies the wet status to Kokomi. What's the wet status? The Bake Kurage periodically deals hydro damage to surrounding enemies. Ah! While also nearby active characters. And it heals! The it jellyfish heals! With Kokomi's max HP. Yeah! That's awesome! That's her burst. Kokomi summons the might of Watatsumi, dealing hydro damage to surrounding enemies. I feel like she could be flashier. She her watery ceremonial garment. While enrobed in the ceremonial garment, Kokomi's At least she's pretty. She slays, and, and that's cool. Are increased. Man, her attack damage went up and so she high. HP for all nearby party members when her normal and charged attacks hit opponents. Oh nice. Kokomi's damage increase and the healing amount both scale with her max HP. Really? Additionally, Kokomi's ceremonial garment increases her resistance to- Is she a five star? Allows her to walk on I think she is, surface. right? What? After unlocking the talent- Hey, this girl can walk on water! Testing Kokomi's elemental burst. That's awesome! of her Bake Kurage if already on the battlefield. In the pure glow of her water-woven garment, Kokomi draws power from the traditional song of the Divine Priestess. Oh? After unlocking the talent's song of pearls, when enrobed by the ceremonial garment, look how much the Kokomi's damage goes up. HP based damage dealt by her normal and charged attacks is further increased by an amount that scales with her own healing bonus. What? She's so fast. Kokomi plans meticulously for every battle she faces. Her thorough attention to detail ensures that her forces will emerge victorious. Man, I need her on my team then. Sangonomiya Kokomi sacrifices Crit Lake to increase her healing bonus. Oh, what? Perhaps with her talent Song of Pearls, she offers stability in any conflict. Oh, she's perfect for healing. In the chaos of battle, victory and defeat can hinge on a single moment. Versed in the art of war, Kokomi knows to stay calm and composed as she develops her winning strategy. The survival of her forces being a key part of her ability to seize the moment of victory. All the bubbles in battle, Kokomi uses the Bakke Looks Kurage so cool. by her elemental skill to recover HP for her. Look at that! 
and set up perfect conditions for hydroelemental reactions. Oh, yes! On the offensive. When needed, she personally joins the fray to unleash her elemental burst. Strengthening oh! Her abilities with the ceremonial guard. Look at that! Then, with the aid of her teammates and her Bake Kurage, with that crow, she was going in. The enemy that setup was perfect for her. Long ago, a god defeated the enemies from the deep and raised the people of Watatsumi from the desolate seabed. Later, another god vanquished their beloved Watatsumi Omikami, leaving the deathly Tataragami in its wake. If you were to liken human history to a great battle, the actions of gods would seem as difficult ah, the environment. to as the weather. A capricious variable. Faced with like the lightning strike? Storms, that looks so cool. Who knows how long this girl who carries a divine will can protect the people of this island. But we're about to find out. She looks like a great character. I mean, she's very agile. I feel like you could set her up with the right team for sure. I'm loving how she is with healing. She she looks like a perfect healer, so I like her. Kujo, let's see. Kujo of Inazuma dwell in the mountain forests, rarely appearing in human society. To live among humans as Kujo Sara does, not to mention serve as their army general. Oh it's yeah, she's gonna be strong. One is she electric? In her eyes, the profound seclusion of the densely wooded mountains and the eternity pined for by the Raiden Shogun. Ooh, look at that! Look at that! I will lead us to victory. I bet, girl. Yeah, she is Electro. Tenryo Commission. Kujo Sara is a fearless warrior and a formidable leader. As one of Tengu blood, she can Ooh, summon the, the wings. power of Tengu Jurai to rouse her troops as she leads them into the heat of battle. She is the, the crow. Are known for their agility, and Kujo Sara knows Inazuma exceptionally well as her role requires her to move around frequently and rapidly. When Does she give me a speed boost? Oh, expedition expeditions. Inazuma, she completes the task in a reduced time. That's good. Kujo Sara's normal attack can combo up to five consecutive shots, <laughs> dealing physical damage. Oh! Holding the attack button executes a more precise this. shot that deals increased damage. Nice. While aiming, crackling lightning accumulates on the arrowhead. An arrow fully charged with the storm's might will deal electro Look at that AOE. On impact. When Kujo Sara casts her elemental skill, she retreats rapidly with the speed of a Tengu. What? And summons the protection of the crow feather in the form of crow feather cover. Oh. When Kujo Sara fires a fully charged aim shot, crow feather cover is consumed, and a crow feather is left. What? The arrow strikes. After a short duration, the crow feather triggers Tengu Jurai ambush. Which deals electro damage to enemies. Oh my god, yes! And grants the that AoE attack is crazy! Based on Kujo's That's a good setup. Look at it. Skilled use of this technique allows Kujo's. I didn't really like her character teaser, but I'm loving her combat. Yeah. Look! After unlocking the talent immovable will, after gaining crow feather cover by casting her elemental skill. Kujo Sara's aimed shots reach full charge more quickly. Oh, that's good. Kujo Sara is an intelligent and capable general. Troop morale is all the stronger. Just it's gonna be fun kiting the enemy into your bow shot. After unlocking the so the crow powers, powers can hit it and do that AOE damage and knock the enemy, enemy back. All party members restore some energy, the amount of which is based on Kujo Sara's energy recharge. Oh, got him. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! What the? Cast down Tengu Jurai Titan Break. Ooh, that's broke. The AOE electro damage. The music here. She's oh. It makes her feel so powerful. Bouts of Tengu Jurai Storm Cluster dealing AOE electro damage. That's both Titan Breaker and Storm Cluster can provide the active character within their AOE with the same attack bonus as given by Tengu Jurai Ambush. No way. The oh, the setup is crazy. Look at this. And then this. And then look at that. And more attack. And you're going off. Kujo Sara is a seasoned war veteran. And a leader great. Yeah, we can tell. 
She uses the secret techniques of the Tengu to bolster her forces and empower them to win victory after victory. <laughs> Battle, Kujo Sara must make Man. use of her elemental skill to adjust her strategic position and use charged shots to trigger Tengu Jurai. Look at it. She is everywhere, man. So quick. And restoring energy for the whole party. When energy is full, Kujo Sara unleashes her elemental burst to assault the Woo! and once again provide a Tengu Jurai attack bonus. That Gaming elemental burst into Raiden Shogun was hot. Defenses. That was hot. As a Tengu raised by humans, Kujo Sara heeds the call of humanity. I loved it. Forsaking her own kind to fight for the mortal world in battle. Perhaps those who achieve such outstanding feats are too satisfied with their own brilliance to realize that their god has raised them in a prison. Ooh. Sometimes I cannot decide whether the greater tragedy is to have lost all one's own ambition or to have adopted the wishes of a god as one's own. When she does that and her crow feathers like appear or her crow wings appear behind her back like that, it gives me such Sephiroth from Final Fantasy 7 vibes, man. <laughs> because that's exactly what Sephiroth does and he brings the wing out. Anyways, we're on to the next one, Alloy from Horizon Zero Dawn. I really don't care about this character, but we'll watch it. Just because I don't really like Horizon Zero Dawn all that much. When I discovered yet another guest during my most recent travels, a machine hunter, an outcast of the Nora tribe. Oh my, I cannot wait to learn more about her. I mean, she's fitting for this game though. It makes sense that she'd be a guest character. And begin our research. Aloy here. I don't know this world, but my arrows are sharp and my bow's ready. Based on what? the observations, <laughs> Aloy is highly proficient with a bow and arrow. She can limit her prey's mobility with the power of cryo. Oh, she uses cryo, that's smart. Setting up ambushes. Rejected by her tribe since birth, Aloy gained her hunting prowess under the watchful eye of an experienced hunter. Like any successful adventurer, hunters never rush into danger. One must tactfully hide and wait to strike. That's exactly how it is in her game. When Aloy is in the party, animals that produce it's all about stealth. raw meat or chilled meat will not be startled when approached. Oh, that's cool. At least the little piggies won't run away from me. Physical damage and can combo up to four consecutive shots. Whoa, she's quick. For a more precise aimed shot with increased damage, I don't think I ever see anybody use her though. Will also accumulate frost on the arrowhead, I forgot she was even in the game. Which will deal cryo damage once fully charged. Tap Aloy's elemental skill. Oh, she has those bombs. In the targeted direction that explodes on impact, dealing cryo damage. Ah, uh, that looks kind of cool. Detonates, the bomb will split into chill water bomblets that explode on contact with opponents or after a short delay, dealing cryo damage. Such an ingenious blasting design. When a freeze bomb or chill water bomb oh. the opponent's attack is reduced, and Aloy receives a coil stack. I think uh, Genshin Impact should partner up with Tales of and have some Tales of characters be some guest characters in this game. That'd be cool. And Aloy gains rushing ice for a set time period, which additionally increases her normal attack damage and converts her normal attack damage oh. into cryo damage. While under the oh my god! <laughs> that setup was crazy. Coil effects will be cleared once Aloy leaves the field for a set time. After unlocking the talent combat over. Oh, setting it up for Klee. Gaining the coil effect, Aloy increases the attack of all party members. This effect. Klee's attacks are slow, but she's so fast. The hunt is on. Oh my Aloy god. A power cell filled with cryo it attacks so many enemies. Then detonates it with an arrow, dealing AoE cryo damage. That's kind of broken. Explosive infused with elemental energy. Remarkable. If utilized in the right time and place, its effectiveness will be indisputable. Yeah, we can see that. <laughs> a good hunter can deliver a decisive blow or hold their own during a long battle. After unlocking the talent Strong Strike, when Aloy is in the rushing ice state conferred by Frozen Wilds, her cryo damage bonus gradually increases. Oof. Aloy 
Ellie is a skilled hunter who moves with great precision, like a cat in pursuit of its prey. It'll be difficult to escape her attacks once she locks onto her target. Oh my gosh, she just shot that guy. <laughs> of her and her companions. In combat, Ailey often opens up with her freeze bomb and accumulates coil stacks while her teammates launch their attacks. Once an opponent is hit It's so weird seeing someone stand so close and shoot a bow at someone's face like that. Thanks to the combat override talent. When Aloy reaches four coil stacks, she enters the rushing ice state. This makes her arrows even more lethal as they'll oh, nice. enemies with biting frost. Oh, that thing took off. Get out of there. With the talent, strong strike that gave me so much anxiety. Aloy's cryo damage during rushing ice. When her energy is full, Aloy unleashes Ooh. a little burst that wipes out opponents in the target area. She's not bad. I mean... I don't like Horizon Zero Dawn, but she definitely fits this game. They did good with her character. As I did. As a sorceress, I love making new discoveries, examining all kinds of otherworldly things, and using that knowledge to create something new. Aww, that was cute. Are more alike than it may seem. Though she plays so many roles in her home world, Aloy begins her journey into that with a clean slate. She'll this get narrator is good. Places, meet new companions, and reconsider what her homeland means to her. With her survival skills, adventuring into that should be a breeze. She's stalking Clee. Oh no! If only she'd let me tinker with her bombs a little. <laughs> I wonder if there's a purpose for her stalking Klee in that moment. She's only on PlayStation though. I'm going to be playing on PC, so I don't even think I'm going to be able to experience her, which kind of sucks, but hey. I mean, it's still kind of cool to see her character in action. Raiden Shogun! The Let's go! Not only an but also a symbol. She Ooh. is their superior leader who embodies eternal We've already gotten her a, a, a huge meal of her gameplay like they they definitely Inazuma. fed us well Little do they know that the current ruler of Inazuma the Raiden Shogun residing high up in Tenshukaku is no longer the same archon who emerged victorious from the Archon War The campaign begins Oh my gosh She is beautiful the Raiden Shogun is a martial <sighs> artist in pursuit of perfection with a sole goal of achieving eternity. No matter who stands in her way to eternal euthymia, they have no chance against the divine punishment that shines down with her bidding. Oh my god, the jiggle! <laughs> I didn't even notice this game had that until she popped up. There's a variety of blade forging techniques. When ascending swords and pole arms, the amount of mora spent by the Raiden Shogun will be decreased. Oh, that's nice, though. That actually Shogun sounds really useful. Can combo up to five strikes with there we go. Arm, dealing physical damage. Holding the attack button consumes a set amount of stamina to perform an upward slash, dealing physical damage. Despite claiming to be detached from the mortal world, Perhaps the Raiden Shogun still remembers She reminds me of Hinata Naruto. from Naruto. The aspirations for some reason, I don't know why. She doesn't look like her, but it just feels like her for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Somebody's going to be like, no, she doesn't. I don't know. For me, it does. Based on the energy cost of the bursts used. Then, use up all the resolve accrued to empower her next elemental burst. The resolve accrued by Chakra Desiderata will dissipate once the Shogun is out of combat for a set time. Oh. The exalted Archon devoted to eternity. What caused her to stop in her track? Her passive and talent. To the wishes of her people? After unlocking the talent Wishes Unnumbered, the elemental orbs and particles collected by nearby party members will grant additional resolve for Chakra Desiderata once per what? set time period. Upon tapping her elemental skill, the Raiden Shogun unveils a She's got layers to her, man. ...dealing electro damage to nearby opponents and granting nearby party members the Eye of Stormy Judgment. <laughs> the Eye of Stormy Judgment. ...and attack and deal damage to opponents. 
The eye of stormy judgment will unleash a coordinated attack, dealing AOE electro damage. Oh wow. That mixed with Hydro burst. looks broken. Their elemental burst damage increased based on the energy cost. What? The elemental bursts unleashed. Thanks to the Eye of Stormy Judgment, the Raiden Shogun can aid her teammates without being on the battle. their offensive capabilities. Oh my god! Now you shall perish. She is support of the year. Gathering truths unnumbered and the resolve of wishes uncounted. The Raiden Shogun unleashes the look. Sono Hitokachi. Ooh, look at that combo! <gasps> She's all over the place. Ishin in combat for a certain duration afterward. The damage dealt by Muso no Hitotachi and Muso Ishin's attacks is based on the number of Whoa. resolve stacks consumed when this skill is used. You need to build up on that chakra. While using Muso Ishin in combat, the Shogun's normal charged and plunging attacks will be regarded as elemental burst damage and will be infused with electro damage which cannot be overridden. What? If such attacks hit opponents, she will regenerate energy for all nearby party members. What? That's insane! In state, the Raiden Shogun's resistance to interruption is increased, and she is immune to electrocharge damage. Oh my dear lord! After unlocking the talent Enlightened One, if the Shogun's energy recharge surpasses a certain value, the surplus energy recharge grants her a percentage-based electro damage bonus. And more energy restoration while in Muso Ishii. She is so flashy. The Raiden Shogun can accelerate the elemental burst rotation of her party while making the elemental bursts of her teammates more powerful. Such a seasoned leader like her remains fearless in the face of any encounter. In combat, the Raiden Shogun can use the Eye of Stormy Judgment to help teammates in difficult fights. Yeah, we saw that. When her teammates unleash elemental bursts or collect elemental orbs or parts, who has that little fire? Uh, gains more resolve for chakra desiderata. Boomerang or whatever that was. That was crazy. Moment to unleash Muso no Hitotachi to deal lethal damage to your enemies, and enter Muso Ishin to clean up the battlefield while regenerating energy for the whole party. Bro, she's the cleanup crew, bro. <laughs> she's the cleanup crew. You use her to set up all your other characters, the dark sea, knock down the enemy's the health as low as they can go, and then you just get her in there and clean it up. And the prosperity of Inazuma, the Raiden Shogun stuck stubbornly to her path. But what let some bloom made others wither. There is no gain without the pain of loss. Yeah. When facing their fears, Archons and mortals are all the same. Yet Archons are born arrogant. By attempting to grasp the heavenly principles, she brought a disaster upon mortals. Perhaps some may say that I'm overstating what happened, but I'm just speaking from experience after all. All right, who is this guy that's narrating? What character is it? I think people told me, I'm gonna check the comment section of the last video. Uh, I didn't get to read them today, but I should have I should have read them. Sayu, whirling wind wheel. Ninjas are often portrayed moving under the veil of night, stealthily conducting their mission in the shadows. As such, people tend to let their imaginations regarding ninjas oh, go wild. Small character. In a flash, vanishing without a trace, and laying poisonous traps. Such skills are necessary to be worthy of the ninja title. But in the eyes of ninja Sayu, no matter how profound the art of ninjutsu may be, it is to be used but for a single purpose. Slacking off. <laughs> to this ninja, never passes on an opportunity Slacking to off. <laughs> the stirring of the leaves is not the opportune diversion to strike her enemy. <laughs> it's a favorable time to slip away for a Look at her. Oh, she's adorable. Sayu, Shumatsuban at your disposal. <laughs> but if you don't need me right now, I'm gonna grab some sleep. No, it's not Sayu time to slack is off. Shumatsuban's resident ninja. And the last successor of the Yuhu art. Yuhu she uses art. The power of Animo to swiftly move across the battlefield, and wields a claymore much heavier than herself to protect her companions. As a master slacker, Sayu's most adept ninjutsu technique is the art of holding her breath. <laughs> when Sayu is in the party, your characters can approach crystal flies, lizards, and other certain animals, Aww. startling them. 
Aw, that's adorable. Sayu's normal attack can combo up to four strikes. Nice. Dealing physical damage to enemies. Holding the attack steadily consumes stamina. While Sayu nice. her claymore, dealing physical damage. Bro, to what's her hitbox enemies. like? I swear Once to God, Sayu that guy swung over her. Blade, she unleashes a more powerful strike that Jeez. launches smaller enemies within her range. That looks Sayu's broke. Use elemental skill to perform a special ninjutsu technique of the Yuhu art, in which Sayu curls up and enters the Fufu Fu wind wheel state <laughs> and rolls forward for a certain distance, smashing into opponents at high speed, dealing animo damage. When the skill ends, Sayu performs a Fufu Fu whirlwind kick, dealing AOE animo damage. Hazo was the other the animo character, right? I feel like we haven't seen damage, very many of them. Causing Sayu to roll continuously in the Fufu Fu wind wheel state. Increasing Sayu's resistance to interruption while within that state. During this time, Sayu can control the direction of her roll. That's pretty cool. Cast the skill again to end her wind wheel state early. Upon ending it, let's roll she around. We, we, feeling a single instance of AOE animo damage. The longer Sayu oh! remains in her wind wheel state, the longer the skill's <laughs> cooldown will become. I can roll down. Staircases. Mental skill and entering the wind wheel state. If Sayu comes <laughs> into contact with hydro, pyro, cryo, or electro, elemental yeah. absorption will occur, causing her to absorb that element. No and way! Additional elemental damage. Oh, that's f crazy! Only occur once <laughs> per use of this skill. Oh, only once per use of the skill. Okay. With adept use of fufu -fu wind wheel state. Sayu can swiftly roll across the battlefield to trigger swirl reactions oh my gosh. with other party members. In the open world, Sayu can make use of her Fufu -fu wind wheel to quickly cover distances. yoo hoo Fufu. -fu. Uh oh, the you are elemental burst to deal animo damage to nearby opponents. As well as heal all nearby parts. Oh, she's all about healing. The amount of HP restored is based on Sayu's Stay in the circle and you're and you're good to go. Sayu performs another ninjutsu technique of the Yuhu art, summoning Sayu's trusty helper, Muji Muji Daruma. <laughs> Muji Muji At Daruma. <laughs> Muji Muji Daruma will take one of several actions based on the situation. I think it's adorable. If the HP of nearby characters is relatively high, it will attack a nearby opponent, dealing animo damage. Whoa. If there are nearby characters with HP below a certain percentage, it will heal Whoa! the character with the lowest HP percentage left. The amount of HP restored is there perfect dodges in this game? If there are no opponents nearby, then it will focus on healing characters. Even if the characters already have relatively high percentages of HP. After unlocking the talent, no work today. No work today. Zaluma heals a character. <laughs> Also heal a certain percentage of HP for other nearby characters on the battlefield. And when it attacks opponents, it will have I wish I could use that AOE. skill. <laughs> I think that's a skill Perhaps everybody so wishes they had in real life. No work today. Strength. She feels that her teammates are better suited for tackling the tasks at hand. In the meanwhile, Sayu can ensure they stay fit for combat. When Sayu triggers a swirl reaction on the battlefield, she will regenerate HP for your characters in the party and all nearby allied characters. Oh, nice. Additionally, the amount of healing will also benefit from wow. Sayu's elemental magic. Those two things, those two attacks together look occur only once per set time period. like super strong. Though it may seem that sleepy Sayu is always slacking off, she is still quite loyal to her commitments, or to put it another way, inescapable duties. She rolls nimbly across the battlefield, <laughs> providing reliable nimbly. support to her teammates. In combat, Sayu relies on her Fufu -fu wind wheel to move swiftly, quickly closing the so useful. on enemies and crashing into them to trigger swirl reactions, while simultaneously providing healing for her When energy is full, Sayu can unleash her elemental burst to summon Muji Muji Daruma. Whether it's to heal her teammates or to increase oh, damage wow. opponents. Yo, Zhao's broke! Can adapt to the situation and He's Sayu broke! <laughs> Did you see those ground pounds? The dreams of your youthhood is an admirable thing indeed. What in the world did can I just you witness? Yourself, can you face the vicissitudes of life? 
And when it comes to improving yourself, <laughs> it was just in the back combat skills for stalking us grow taller to the young. Anything worth striving for is a truly valuable endeavor. Ah, now that I think about it, I too was probably once that way. Me too, naive, persistent, and untiring. <laughs> I'm only joking, of course. I've long forgotten the happenings of hundreds of years ago. Adorable, man. She is definitely a pretty decent healer to have in your group, I'm guessing. And then on top of that, like, that swirl a bit ability, it, it looks like a problem. <laughs> Yoimiya is the next one. If you ever make it to Inazuma and ask the locals what to see while you're there, Nearly everyone you talk to will emphatically recommend a fireworks display. Ah, uh, like the fireworks stars girl. In reverse, they fly up into the night, then burst into color. She looks so the sweet. And sea, and the faces of those watching below. Look at that. She's so the cute, dude. But dazzling spectacle is all the work of one woman, Inazuma's most skilled fireworks expert, Yomiya. Darn you, Raiden Shoga. Now I'm noticing the jiggle everywhere. <laughs> Let me get this. Shooting fireworks straight into the skies with a boat business a shot. <laughs> In Yoimiya's capable hands, her spectacular fireworks are not just the grand finale of a festival. Her design is awesome. They also make highly potent weapons for protecting her friends and fighting her foes. And no one has a flair for fighting with fireworks quite like her. What's up with the bandages on her, though? Yoimiya's handiwork is exquisite, and she dabbles in many other crafts besides firework making. Always adding her unique touch to all her work. When Yoimiya crafts decorations, ornaments, and landscape furnishings, a portion of the materials used will be refunded. That sounds cool. Her normal attack can combo up to five consecutive shots, dealing physical wow. damage. Holding the attack button executes a more precise aimed shot that deals increased damage. So pretty much like everybody. Oh, Based the little the fireworks time, that pop up around her. It's different effects. Charge level one fires off a flaming arrow that deals pyro damage. Oh. At charge level two, depending on the exact charging time. Look at that. The aimed shot generates up to three kindling arrows when she releases it. Kindling arrows home in on nearby enemies, dealing pyro. Does it do AoE? Tap Yoimiya's elemental skill, and she waves a sparkler. <laughs> she waves a sparkler. Salt Peter to surround her and sending her into the Niwabi Ensho state. Oh, she's faster in that state. Time, Woo! Oh my goodness! Be blazing arrows. Blazing arrows. Damage, I'm here. Converting <laughs> the attacks to pyro damage. That was a pun that the narrator did earlier. Yoimiya's normal attack, firework flare up, will not generate kindling arrows at charge level two. Oh, that sucks. After unlocking the talent Tricks of the Troublemaker, during Yoimiya's elemental skill duration, when her normal attack hits an enemy, she gains a stackable pyro damage bonus, which lasts for three seconds. Oh, that that enemy. Here come the fireworks. Woo! The fireworks show. Yoimiya leaps into the air together with <laughs> her original creation, Ryukin Saxifridge, firing forth blazing rockets bursting with surprise. She's so flashy. Pyro damage and mark one of the hit enemies with Aura's blaze. They're just showing off with the particle effects in the game, aren't they? Attacks by any party member other than Yoimiya that hit an enemy marked by Aura's blaze. Yeah, Lord. Blaze will trigger explosions, dealing AOE pyro damage. If the enemy affected by Aura's Blaze is defeated before it expires, the effect will pass on to another nearby enemy. What? Inherit the remaining duration. Nice! Aura's Blaze explosions are subject to... Oh, here to he is. Cooldown. Mr. Broke. After Ooh. unlocking the talent, summer he can lunge ball. forward and lunge down. Duration after casting Yoimiya's elemental burst, nearby party members other than Yoimiya herself gain an attack bonus. This bonus is based on the number of Tricks of the Troublemaker stacks Yoimiya possesses when she unleashes her elemental burst. Oh. Armed with a pyrovision, Yoimiya has more than one way of playing with fire. 
Hey, <laughs> I like that. This power takes her skills with the bow to another level. Turning even her arrows into fireworks that send sparks flying all over the battlefield. Here we go. Yoimiya begins by using her elemental skill to enter the Niwabi Ensho state. There it is. She engages the enemy with enhanced normal attacks. Using tricks of the troublemaker to stack up a pyro damage bonus. Sounds good. When Niwabi Ensho ends, if her energy is full, Woo! she unleashes her elemental burst to further pressure the enemy. Then leaves the field, supporting the rest Ooh, of the team with attack bonus and pyro damage. Woo! Watching the enemy disappear. This is the first time I actually get to see her and go and off. As the explosions in the sky fade away, breathless spectators find their. I haven't seen a bad bow user yet. But Yoimiya is already busy preparing for the next display. It is a time honored routine, unchanging night after night. And everyone in Inazuma looks forward to the splendid sight of her latest creation. <laughs> the fireworks. She's all about them. Moment, the dazzling flashes fade and the crowds are gone. After hundreds of years, this sight is nothing new to me. But who's to say that brief moments of splendor can't become everlasting memories? <laughs> the god who pursues eternity has yet to realize that not all that endures is constant. Time can keep fireworks in people's minds long after they've faded. Just as, once in a while, it can send stars fixed high above, plummeting down to the ground. That was deep. <laughs> Darn you, narrator. I like the, the narrator in the Aloy trailer. Her her voice was so smooth. I need to go back to her. Ah, the other Kamisato. In Inazuma City, the Shirasagi Himegimi is a name known to all. Those fortunate enough to meet Kamisato Ayaka in person describe her as the princess of the Kamisato clan. I think a lot of people were telling me that she's really powerful. But kind and gentle like a I think you guys were saying that in the comment section. She brings joy and hope to everyone she meets. The other half of perfection is, of course, martial prowess. So when Kamisato Ayaka draws her blade and assumes a fighting stance, her opponent should beware. Kamisato Ayaka, present. Oh, she's cryo. A master of the Inazuman Kamisato art of What's the point of the constellation? Kamisato Ayaka has honed her blade work to the pinnacle of proficiency. She combines swift and agile strikes with the power of cryo to fight back against those of malicious intent. As the daughter of the Yashiro Commission's Kamisato clan, Ayaka is versed in a variety of art forms. Her expertise in the art of the sword includes knowledge of advanced weapons. Why does she hold her sword backhanded like that? When Ayaka crafts weapon ascension materials, she has a certain chance to receive double the product. Nice! Ayaka's normal attack can combo up to five strikes Whoa. that Whoa. do physical damage to enemies. Holding the attack button consumes Whoa. a set amount of stamina to perform the EI technique. Unleashing yeah. a series of blade winds that deal physical damage to enemies. When Ayaka sprints, she cloaks herself in frozen oh! form, consuming stamina to move as a rapid torrent. Hey, baby girl is broke! While in her Senho state, what? Ayaka can travel swiftly over Across the water? This when she leaves is crazy! And reappears, she applies the cryo element to nearby And she enemies. does damage! Also, With that, she will receive a cryo infusion for a short duration. Oh, wow. The cryo infusion converts Kamisato. <laughs> that guy running around. Oh, damage. he got frozen. After unlocking the talent content, send blessing. If the cryo energy released when exiting Kamisato Stop. Art Senho comes into contact with an enemy, Ayaka will regain some stamina. Oh, that's good. Additionally, she will gain a temporary cryo damage bonus. Proficient use of these skills allows Kamisato Ayaka to move freely around the battlefield. God, they really the put so much risk. detail in the combat of all these characters, the man. The the Their movesets are amazing. Goes Tapping Ayaka's elemental skill summons oh. blooming ice. 
launching adjacent enemies and dealing AOE crime Oof. damage. After unlocking the talent Amatsumi Kunitsumi Sanctification for a short duration after casting Kamisato Arkyoka, Kamisato Ayaka's normal and charged attacks deal increased damage. Oh, that's cool. Whoa, it travels. Kamisato Ayaka summons the frost with flawless poise, releasing a frost flake oh. Sekinoto that travels forward. The frost flake Sekinoto is a storm of whirling icy winds that slashes repeatedly at enemies, dealing oh. cryo damage and blooming at the end of its duration. Dealing a what? Of AOE cryo damage. You are crazy, girl. Even in the heat of battle, Kamisato Ayaka is the picture of elegance. Her own blade work she philosophy is. adds finesse to Kamisato Art's Tachi Jutsu. With the Tachi Jutsu, of a right? of snow, she defeats her foes in a dance of frost. When the battle begins, Ayaka enters her Senho state, then swiftly draws near to her enemies to launch her attack. Oh. The versatile range of cryo ability at her disposal creates opportunities to coordinate with her teammates. Yes. She gains we see that. Over her enemies. Wow. She alternates between normal and charged attacks to take them down one by one. When energy there you go. Kamisato Ayaka unleashes her elemental burst to deal oh. further damage and clean up the field. She's broke. Get her out of the game. <laughs> Get her out of the game. The Yashiro Commission. They are full of praise for Kamisato Fantastic, man. Great character. Social gatherings. I wasn't a big fan of her and after watching the demo, but is uttered, this kind of sold me. So in tribute to her flawless etiquette and impeccable character. But what can anyone know of how Ayaka views herself in her innermost being? As the princess of the Yashiro Commission's Kamisato clan, Ayaka shoulders her family's duty to cherish the aspirations of ordinary people. This girl in work, man. But she also has dreams of her own that she holds dear. Perhaps the thing that she really needs. She needs Sayu skill. No work. <laughs> to share a pot of tea and to play a game of Go. Play a game of Go? Is that Uno? <laughs> and with whom to stand shoulder to shoulder when it comes time to draw her blade. Somebody was telling me in the next update, which should have a live stream next week sometime. I think it's next week. I think it's on the 26th. They're actually going to be showing off the TCG. Because um, it's the update for the new patch. Kanahara, yes! No one is sure when they first I can't wait to see the TCG. It, once in a while, from the deck of the Alcor, flagship of the heavily armed Crux fleet, the soft sound of a flute can be heard. Following the ocean breeze to wherever it may lead. Trace the sound back to its source, and you will see a young samurai of Inazuma calmly sitting in a crow's nest, playing a leaf flute while taking in the sights and sounds of the natural world. But ask the other sailors about his story, and you'll find they know little more than you. All they can tell you is he is a trainee sailor from Inazuma. His name is Kaidahara Kazuha. He's adorable. Like driving rain or winds that churn. I shall return by blade alone, armed, if barefoot, to my home. <laughs> Many look at Kaidehara Kazuha and see but a young face. What a way with words. Is a swift and deadly samurai so smooth. Who is not to be taken lightly. Kaidehara Kazuha has the ability to manipulate Animo and provides an elemental damage bonus for members of his party. Also with his elemental skill, he can make frequent use of special plunging attacks. Yeah, him and Crow Girl. Together, they gotta be good together. To Bro, child is going off. You With saw that? Leaf on the breeze, he is light as a feather and swift as a blade. I like that. When Kaidahara Kazuha is in your party, he reduces sprinting stamina consumption for your party. Now members, that's useful. Making exploration faster. Kazuha's normal attack can combo up to five strikes that deal physical Ooh. damage to enemies. Hold the attack button to consume a set amount of stamina. Ooh, the way he sees that. To his front, dealing high physical damage. While Kazuha is airborne, pressing the attack button causes him to perform Ooh. a plunging attack. A plunging attack. Opponents along the path and dealing AOE damage. Oh. Tap his elemental skill, Chihayaburu, to oh! unleash a secret blade technique. Pulling enemies and objects toward him. Oh! Just toss that man off the cliff! 
Can you follow that up with the uh, the plunge? Moment to soar up into the air for a short period after using Chihayaburu, while Kazuha remains airborne. Oh! Powerful plunging attack. Meet Dare Ranzan. Excuse me. Damage dealt by this plunging attack is converted to animo damage. When Kazuha lands, he uses another secret blade technique to create a wind tunnel that pulls in nearby enemies and objects. With this effect, Kazuha can concentrate enemies in one place, allowing other party Whoa. members to attack more efficiently. Chihayaburu is a skill oh, look at that. that used while airborne. Giving Kazuha great agility when out Oh, of that's really cool. When Chihayaburu is held instead of tapped. Kazuha deals increased Man, it's got hops. over a wider area. Yes, you can! Woohoo! Oh, this is my character, y'all. This is my character. Skill can absorb hydro, pyro, cryo, or electro. It can? If a Midare Ranzan plunging attack is performed before Chihayaburu's effects expire, it deals additional elemental damage of the Wow. Only one elemental absorption can occur per Chihayaburu. My man is broken! Class I can just imagine the setups ball. with that, man. Throwing the enemies into the air, switching to another character. Kazuha's elemental burst is the pinnacle achievement of his self-taught blade work. He strikes with the force of the first winds of Whoa! Hall, dealing AOE animo damage. This attack and it keeps going called Autumn Whirlwind. That's a pretty finisher. Deals animo damage to enemies within it. I love the leaves. Autumn Whirlwind comes into contact with Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Don't Electro. tell me it does those damages. It will absorb that element and deal it. Oh, it absorbs damage. elements too. This elemental absorption may only The Inazuma characters are broke. <laughs> <laughs> They're all broke. <laughs> oh boy! Creating ideal opportunities for his allies to attack. The wind blows to all within its vast reach and knows the coming fall from the first withered leaf. For a set duration after Kazuha triggers a swirl reaction, all party members receive a damage bonus for the corresponding element. Oh, nice. The bonus scales off of Kazuha's elemental mastery. If multiple elemental damage bonuses are gained in this manner, they are applied concurrently. Kaidahara Kazuha has roamed far and wide and is acutely sensitive to changes in the natural environment. I see that. When the way ahead is rocky, his mastery of Animo allows him to swiftly turn the tide of the battle, guiding the whole party to victory. In combat, he Animal characters seem really good. To apply elements to enemies. Then he uses his elemental skill to gain control over the opponents, following up here and there with powerful plunging attacks to keep them where he wants them. Wow. While also activating poetics of Fubutsu. Ooh, that's, see, that's what I want to do right there. Enhancing the whole party's attack capabilities. When energy is full. Kaidahara Kazuha unleashes his elemental burst, generating an autumn whirlwind field. The field creates the perfect conditions for the you turning your party into a force to be reckoned with. Oh! Kaidahara Kazuha is no aimless one. Wow! He has a deep sense of purpose. She was going the in with those charge attacks. Homeland behind, not to part with the past, but in the search for a new hope. As he navigates his path, he charts a course through the myriad of storms that come his way. His exposure to the elements keeps him in touch with nature and connects him with other people. That man absorbs all the elements. Those who choose to defy the gods are destined for hardship. But even a maple leaf blowing in the breeze, if it falls into the right company, can learn to sail the storm winds of the sea. To shores beyond the horizon. I need him, man. He's definitely somebody I'm rolling for, for sure. If he ever appears in a banner or has his own banner. But, man. Kaidahara. Definitely awesome. Next up is Eula, the Surging Frost. Ever since the first night of Favonius rid herself of her chains, the winds of freedom have carried the fight against oppression into every corner of Mondstadt. We're back in Mondstadt. Today, among the ranks of the knights sworn to champion freedom, 
there walks a descendant of the She's former so pretty. aristocracy. Eula, the progeny of an infamous lineage with vengeance always on her lips, is the captain of the Knights of Favonius Reconnaissance Company. The Spindrift Knight, supremely skilled with her blade. It's all about them blades. I feel like we haven't seen blades in a while. Many wondering why like great, like great swords. Now nah, I'm not talking about like you know. Because the songs of freedom. Katanas. To the Mondstadt winds first asked, why not? Ready for reconnaissance. Naturally, Eula earned her captaincy with her superior capabilities, masterfully combining Favonius blade work with cryo magic. Whoa. She forms frost at the tip of her blade, which she Whoa. wields with the cadence of a dancer. Oh my goodness. Waltzing gracefully into battle, she then strikes like a crashing wave. Oh, that Eula elemental burst. no additional status in Mondstadt from her once noble lineage, but finds herself the victim of a strict and outmoded education. She dismisses what she was taught as pointless pretension. It is. It is unable to escape its influence entirely. Often I know the feeling. Often herself to meticulous introspection. When Eula crafts talent level up materials, she has a chance to double the output, boosting the party's adventure readiness. Eula's normal attack can combo up to five strikes to deal physical damage to enemies. Uh. <laughs> Holding the attack steadily consumes stamina, while Eula unleashes a rapid string of slashes, what? also dealing physical damage. What the heck was that? When her charged attack ends. She unleashes a powerful Whoa! strike that launches smaller Break those shields. Tap Baby girl. Mental skill ice tide vortex to perform a rapid slash that deals cryo damage. When the slash hits an enemy, That's cool. Eula gains one stack of Grimheart. The effect has a maximum of two stacks. Grimheart two increases stacks. Eula's resistance to interruption in her defense. Creating optimal conditions nice. for her to dish out damage. Nice! Holding Ice Tide Vortex causes Eula to consume all stacks of Grimheart. Into one big and swing? A spinning frontal slash that deals AoE cryo damage. That's awesome. If this attack consumes Grimheart stacks, it will decrease the physical and cryo She is a tank, man. Enemies. She hits Each hard. Stack Grimheart consumed will convert to an Ice World Ramp. Dealing cryo damage to nearby enemies. Blood of frost. Here we go. Woo! Eula's elemental burst unleashes a mighty slash of her sword, dealing cryo damage to surrounding enemies and forming a lightfall sword that follows her around. Oh, and that thing attacks on. While the lightfall sword is present, Eula's resistance to interruption oh, is no. increased further. Additionally. When she literally is a tank. Attack, elemental skill or elemental burst. Ah! The lightfall sword's energy is charged. Whoa! When its duration ends, the lightfall sword will descend and explode violently. That's nice to have. To surrounding enemies. You could use the that to set up too. Increases with the lightfall sword's charge stack. When Eula leaves the field, the lightfall sword. Yep. See, there it is. Explode. Yep. I already knew it. You're unlocking the talent, Roiling Rhyme. When Eula holds Whoa. Ice Tide Vortex, if two stacks of Grimheart are consumed together, a shattered Lightfall Sword is created and explodes immediately. Dude, check this out. Oosh. Of the Lightfall Sword. Is that like a, is it an AOE attack? Yeah. Years of reconnaissance company campaigns have honed Eula's instinct for launching surprise offensives. When she strikes, waves of frost and rays of light surge forth like ocean spray. <laughs> After unlocking the talent Wellspring of Warlust, casting Eula's Elemental Burst immediately grants one stack of Grimheart and resets the cooldown of her elemental skill. All right. The Spindrift Knight's battleground is the shadows far beyond Mondstadt's. I have Warlust. found my tank. <laughs> Eula's strength is in hunting down her enemy with courage and calculation, striking with her frosty Favonius blade. Work. In combat. Eula often starts the offensive with her normal attack, interspersing her strikes with the tapping effect of her elemental skill to keep up the pursuit and accrue Grimheart stacks. Next, holding her elemental skill at an opportune moment will deal damage to her enemy. Here we go, y'all. Also reducing their physical and cryo resistance by consuming the Grimheart stacks. Oh. When Eula's energy is full, unleashing her elemental burst puts further pressure on the enemy and creates a lightfall sword. 
Yep, there's the Lightfall the Sword. For a rapid offensive. Yep, go in. To charge the Lightfall Sword. Don't stop. And finally take down the enemy when it Woo! explodes. Eula, you are too good. There are those with hatred in their hearts that are able to do what Eula has done. Take the lust for vengeance bequeathed to them by fate and channel it into a force for self-advancement. Yeah. For Eula, this has set her down a path of peace and inner strength. That's good. Still, there are others for whom the passage of time does nothing to quell the poison spreading through their souls. Unfortunately. Only the future will reveal the path they take, but inevitably, it will be a different one. 10 out of 10 character. 10 out of 10. Eula, the tank. You can't stop her. That would literally be the character that like leads my team, man. If I can get her, game over. I just love that play style of nothing can take me down. Yan Fei is both the nation of contracts and the beating heart of trade in Tavat. Its laws are rigorous and exhaustive, serving as pillars of order in a fluid population. But those able to memorize and abide by all the laws of the land number few indeed. Accordingly, when civil disputes and criminal proceedings arise, this song. the first point of call for many is Liyue Harbor's famed legal advisor, Yen Fei. Yen Fei! Only by adhering to the law can the people solve life's myriad of problems. Oh, no. As Liyue's top legal expert, Yen Fei knows the law like the back of her hand, as well as how to bend it, balancing legality and humanity. Her expertise routinely resolves the most intractable of That disputes. outfit should be illegal. <laughs> confronted by those who act with flagrant disregard for the law, it is Yen Fei's She's slaying, though. fire and flame that will place them in jeopardy. As Liyue's most sought-after legal advisor, Yen Fei provides legal support across the whole of Liyue, which has allowed her to explore many of its hidden corners. Having mastered the legal codices, she is well versed in the various local specialties traded by the waterfront. When Yen Fei is in That's the park, pretty. the location of resources unique to Liyue appear on the minimap. Useful. Making it easier to gather certain items. Pinari does that too. There's Yen a couple Fei's characters that do that. Casts a fireball and can be comboed to deal up to three rounds of pyro damage. Hitting an enemy with a normal attack grants Yen Fei a single scarlet seal. She can nice. possess a maximum of three Scarlet Seals at a time, gaining a new Scarlet Seal. This looks like the unknowns from Pokemon. Existing seals. Each Scarlet Seal decreases Yen Fei's stamina consumption, and they will disappear when she leaves the field. Holding oh. the attack button consumes a set amount of stamina and releases a charged attack, dealing AoE pyro damage in the area in front of her. Any Scarlet Seals held by Yen Fei are consumed when a charged attack is released. And the AOE and damage of this attack are increased based on the number of Scarlet I feel like I'm gonna have to do too much thinking while using her. After unlocking the talent proviso, when Yen Fei consumes Scarlet Seals with a charged attack, each Scarlet Seal will increase Yen Fei's pyro damage bonus for a second. Oh, okay. If she uses a charged attack again during this period, it will end the effect. Yeah, you gotta. You can't just like spam the attack button with her. Whilst the adeptal power that resides within her, you gotta use her attack sparingly. Really plan them out. When Yen Fei's charged attacks deal crits, she will deal an additional bout of AOE pyro damage. Tap Yen Fei's elemental skill to summon blistering flames that deal AOE pyro damage. Oh, that's cool. Hitting an enemy with her elemental skill grants Yen Fei the maximum number of Scarlet Seals, which she can use to unleash a follow-up charged attack, keeping the ball firmly in her court. Nice. Okay, what does this do, though? Yen Fei's elemental burst triggers a spray oh, nice. of intense flames that rush at nearby enemies, dealing AoE pyro damage and granting her the maximum number of Scarlet Seals, as well as a It didn't look that powerful, though. Brilliance grants Yen Fei a Scarlet Seal at fixed intervals. It also increases the damage dealt by her charged attacks. Whoa! Adept use of Brilliance allows Yen Fei to increase her Scarlet Seal accumulation rate and string together charged attacks, dealing greater damage to her. There you go! Yen Fei's flaming seals are a powerful legal instrument, 
and her terms of use ensure that they bolster her position in any form of dispute. She's handing out copyright and strikes. <laughs> Then following with an enhanced charged attack, Yenfei can rule decisively on any case before her. During battle, Yenfei can alternate between normal attacks and her elemental skill to deal pyro damage to enemies, and gain Scarlet Seals. With Scarlet Seals in her possession, Yenfei can release powerful charged attacks to put the enemy on the back foot. When Yenfei's energy is full, unleash her elemental bursts to further increase her damage output. At this wow. stage, Yenfei needs only to release regular charges. She's quick. To route her enemies once and for all. She's all right. Yenfei was born during Liu. Not Tuesday. impressed. Though She's all right. Eliminated beast. She never signed a contract with the Geo Archon. Unconstrained by Adepti responsibility, she keeps herself busy in the city, experiencing all manner of worldly affairs, comprehending all levels of human emotion. In her hands, the legal codices are a contract, a tool. A framework of reason my god who reads like that <laughs> she longs for a free-spirited life well within the confines of the law but each detail of the cumbersome legal codices is also dear to her heart perhaps one day a balance can be struck between them not impressed her gameplay is kind of slow for me like i said it's a lot of like using things sparingly I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm a button masher. Monstat's Church of Favonius. Rosaria. A unique sister, Rosaria. Despite I've seen a little bit of her, and it seemed like she. Witnessed offering prayers. She's to decent. Gods. Swift of foot and aloof in speech. Oh my gosh. She becomes active in the darkness of Monstat's night. She belongs to a clandestine side of Monstat, brandishing sharp blades under the moonlight to strike down intruding shadows. In exchange for the people's freedom and peace, the non-believer is... The fan service is wild with her. Touch. <laughs> City blessed. They knew what they were doing. Con. Sleep soundly. They definitely knew what they were doing. Not for the gods, nor the betterment of others, but for yourself. I'm looking respectfully, okay? <laughs> one -on -one respectfully. <laughs> And as a wielder, oh my gosh, fan service shot. Her <laughs> elemental burst provide continuous crime. Why did I need to see her butt? Assisting the party with damage output and field control. What are these camera angles? When Rosaria is in the party, she increases the movement speed of party members during nighttime. Dur this only during nighttime? be applied in domains, trounce domains, or the spiral abyss. Uh... It didn't even seem like it was that much faster. Performs up to five consecutive strikes, dealing physical damage to enemies. Holding the attack button allows Rosaria to consume a certain amount of stamina to lunge forwards, dealing physical damage to enemies in her path. Okay, basic. I've seen it. I've seen it done a lot of times. Swiftly positions her behind her opponent. She then pierces and slashes the enemy with her polearm, dealing. Whoa! Ravaging Whoa, that teleport! Quickly approach an enemy, identify an advantageous position, and launch your assault. He's teleporting behind also people. Be used to dodge enemy attacks. Oh man! To turn the tide of battle. It is important to note that Rosaria cannot use this ability to move behind larger enemies. Oh really? That's. The talent, Regina I see why they did that. Rosaria strikes an enemy from Definitely a balancing her out. Confession. Her crit rate will increase for a short period of time. Because if you could, she'd be super broken. For her elemental burst. Man, Rosaria that was crazy. Her pole arm around wow. All nearby foes. An icy lance of the spear of Gugnir. Dealing cryo damage. While the ice lance is present, it will intermittently emit a freezing chill, what? dealing cryo damage to nearby enemies. Ooh! Strategically utilizing the ice lance through elemental reactions allows party members to control. That's that's a good setup, man. Damage upon enemies. After unlocking the talent Shadow Samaritan, when Rosaria uses rites of termination, all party members except for Rosaria receive a temporary increase to their crit rate based on Rosaria's own crit rate. Oh, really? Rosaria. You need to up her crit rate, rate then. Turns daytime idleness into the biting blades of winter that plunge into the bones of the guilty. As the battle begins, coordinate attacks. <laughs> Love the way they word these. In your party. 
and use elemental skills to trigger elemental reactions. At the same time, mm. they can shift behind the enemy and follow up with normal attacks. When it's all about being behind them. Is full, use her elemental burst to inflict continuous cryo damage. Then Ooh. leave the field. Leave the field. Get out of there. Use the crit rate increase from the talent Shadow Samaritan to assist the other party members in swiftly defeating. All you got to do is uh, build her around crit critting. Monstats knights are peaceful and, you're good. and tranquil. But in the quiet of the dark, there are those who glimpse a flash of cold steel. This is the dour sister who meets out punishment to protect this place of peace and the sisters who are purity incarnate. Unperturbed with dirtying her hands, she has become a blood-soaked executioner. Oh my gosh. And having witnessed the cruelty of this world. I'm trying to be executed. Close her eyes and extol the blessings of the gods. I'm trying to be executed. Oh, that's Azar, pretty. The most unique sister in Mondstadt's Church of Favonius never needed redemption from the gods for she grasped it with her own hands something sounded sus about that last sentence but okay she looks good man i'm loving her elemental burst i really do how like uh like how it's based off her crit rate oh who tao let's go she can power up her value tradition her team members and, and that's that's good are embodied in all manner of rights of these the rights nobody life's end are of utmost importance like who wouldn't want a crit these up right rights are crit rate up is always awesome and only wang sheng funeral parlor can conduct them to the satisfaction of all wang sheng has stood for 77 generations and has gained still greater fame in recent years Thanks to their eccentric young director, Hu Tao. When the sun's out, bathe in sunlight. But when the moon's out, bathe in moonlight. Yeah! Hu Tao manipulates Pyro with ease. Yo, I and love can her, dude. And her HP to increase her damage output. What? Cleansing the world of impurities with an unrelenting flame. Oh my gosh! When Hu Tao cooks a dish perfectly, she has a chance to obtain a suspicious dish of the same kind. Ah, uh, suspicious dish? That looks disgusting. Hu Tao's normal attack can combo up to six strikes. Six strikes, y'all. Damage to enemies. What? Hu Tao's charged attack consumes a set amount of stamina to lunge forward, dealing physical damage to enemies in her path. Hu Tao also has a unique effect when sprinting, okay. allowing her to briefly disappear and pass through certain small foes. Excuse me. <laughs> I like how she's watching him run around. Hu Tao consumes part of her HP to cast her elemental skill, knocking nearby enemies back and enter. Okay, so she hurts herself to attack skill. stronger. This converts her attack damage. You gotta be to careful with that. Damage, which cannot be overridden by another elemental infusion. Mm. Her resistance to interruption is also increased. And she receives an attack increase. Wow! Her max HP when entering this state. Whew. Paramita Papilio ends after a set duration, or when Hu I mean, Tao say that defeated. five times fast. After unlocking the talent Flutterby, Paramita Papilio, Papilio increases the crit rate of all of Hu Tao's party members. Other oh, than she herself for a set duration. She increases crit rate Moreover, too. While Paramita Papilio is in effect. Hu Tao's charged attacks apply the Blood Blossom effect to enemies it hits. Enemies affected by Blood Blossom will take pyro damage at set intervals. Oh, nice. This effect automatically expires after a while. Only one Blood Blossom can exist on any one target at a time. And only Hu Tao can refresh its duration. Wang Sheng has a long heritage. It's said that there's see what our passive talent is a secret technique to traverse between life and death. Whoa, afraid in the face of death, they instead unleash yet greater power. Once the talent Sanguine Rouge is unlocked, Hu Tao. Whoa, she broke that shield bonus when her HP is low. Pyre, pyre, pants on fire. <laughs> Hu Tao commands a blazing spirit to deal pyro damage in a large AOE. Oh, when her elemental burst hits enemies. Hu Tao regenerates a certain percentage of her max HP. Oh, really? To get the HP back. Five enemies can affect this percentage. Wow. 
Additionally, using this skill when Hu Tao's HP is low deals greater damage Ooh. and regenerates more HP. Bro, baby girl is broken. <laughs> she is broken. In peril, sir. <laughs> As such, ah. she must coordinate with her teammates and choose the right moment to use her skills and manage her. It's HP. all about HP management with her. Yeah. You got to be Hu careful Tao with that. Often begins by using her elemental skill to enter the Paramita Papilio state. Then she Dear Lord. between normal and charged attacks to deal pyro damage. Oh, wow. Applying blood blossoms onto enemies. She then leaves the field using the crit rate increase from Flutterby Jeez. to increase her teammates damage output. Child came when in and cleaned up. Low, she can choose a group of enemies upon which to unleash. Ooh, her that was a good burst, move. Wow. Damage and regenerating her HP. Are getting that HP back. Yeah. Broke the funeral parlor conducts rites of utmost solemnity and its staff. This is a great character, man. Making Hu Tao's liveliness seem an ill fit. Her elders once criticized her mischief making, but having seen her immaculate conduct of the parlor's affairs, they could do naught but admit their error. Yeah, she's she's a force to be reckoned with. Death are but two halves of an end. <laughs> her dance. <laughs> life leads unto death, and death unto new life. Why then should death be taboo? Hu Tao has had the wisdom to see this, though some of her elders have yet to do so. W. I need her, man. I absolutely need her. Hu Tao is a force to be reckoned with, like I said earlier. Fantastic. Zhao! We're here! Many fell in the Archon War. Oh, baby. Everybody, pay attention to this one. Their you gotta be quiet. And malice survived as remnants, posing a continued threat to the world. In Liyue, the task of ending this threat, or rather, enduring it, falls to Xiao. Look at that! That plunge! To most in Liyue, Ooh. Xiao is a name seldom heard, and as the few who have seen him can attest, he appears only when grave danger is nigh. Coming across this adeptus, should one count their blessings or their curses? Conquering demons is what I do. Yeah, we see that. Hailed as the conqueror of demons, Xiao's abilities are unparalleled among the adepti. As such, he vanquishes demons without breaking a sweat. Xiao is agile. God, fire this His man movement is. Movement skills allow him to dart around the battlefield. And when he dons the mask of the Yaksha, wow. his abilities are enhanced even further as he purges Whoa. evil and protects Lyra. <laughs> After years of honing his abilities, Xiao uh. has developed an adeptus art that affords him strength at high altitudes. When Xiao is in the party, the active character consumes less stamina while climbing. Well, that's good. Xiao's normal attack can combo up to six strikes, dealing physical damage Woo! to enemies. Love his combo. The button causes Xiao to consume stamina and perform an upward thrust. Dealing Throws him in the air, yes. Enemies into the air. While airborne, press attack to perform a plunging attack. That is Striking fire. He's on the way down and dealing AOE damage upon landing. Xiao will not lose HP from a plunging attack, no matter how high he starts. What? Xiao's <laughs> elemental skill to lunge forward. No fall damage. Animal damage to enemies in his path. Make adept use of this skill to dart effortlessly around the battlefield, dealing damage while tactically adjusting your position. Also, lemniscatic wind cycling can be used while airborne, making it easy for Xiao to navigate challenging terrain, aiding with exploration. Ha! Lemniscatic wind cycling starts. You can only do a. Oh, uh, there's a cooldown on that. After unlocking the talent Dissolution Eon Heaven Fall, if Xiao uses multiple charges in quick succession, damage dealt increases with each one. Oh, nice. Evil conquering. When Xiao unleashes an element, reminds burst, me of a uh, Sheik the Yaksha's mask from Smash Bros. Struck fear into gods and demons alike. His attacks now deal animo damage, 
which cannot be overridden by another elemental infusion. And Xiao's attack, AoE, and damage are both increased. In addition, Xiao's jumping ability is greatly enhanced. Or am I thinking of Fox, Star Fox, and Falco? Attacks. The Yaksha's mask brings enormous power, but also great suffering. During Xiao's elemental burst, he will continually lose HP. Oh, snap. This effect stops if he leaves the field. After unlocking the talent Conqueror of Evil, Tamer of Demons, while Bane of All Evil is active, Xiao's damage gradually increases. <laughs> when what? Xiao goes into battle, danger follows in his wake. To avoid harming others, he acts quickly, completing the task at hand as efficiently as possible. Wow! As the fight begins, <laughs> Xiao uses his oh my goodness to move rapidly around the battlefield, changing strategic positions, dealing damage as he goes, and building up energy. When his energy Tell is him to full, stop. he unleashes his elemental burst. Oh, the boom! <laughs> they can't do anything the with plunging attacks and finish off every last one. They can't do anything when he gets into that plunging attack. It's over. You just spam it. For millennia, tales of the Yakshas have been told in Liyue. But over time, these defenders of the masses have all but disappeared. Only Xiao still honors his contract with the Geo Archon by performing the duties assigned to him. Though the cost of this duty is perpetual solitude. Man, that's unfortunate. I know that Adepti suffer heartache just as I do. But I cannot know Xiao's future. Will Xiao be ravaged by the unending war he wages and be plunged into despair? Or will he meet someone who understands his sacrifice and can shine a ray of light into his dark world? Aww. Sad story. He's the man that's like super mad and very powerful but has like that sad story it's like sasuke from naruto man Zhao is awesome though can you okay hold on given Liyue's present prosperity this one Russia might be fun to watch operational support everybody's been telling me she's broke millennia from the birth of the liu Chising to its current roster of seven they've all relied on the ua high pavilion secretary the half chilin illuminated beast ganyu who assists the Chile. mortals in handling the most crucial matters. Although I detest deities and have no liking for the Adepti who sign contracts with the Geo Archon, a person like Ganyu is still deserving of my respect. My job is to honor my contract with Rex Lapis by looking out for the my God, her voice. of all living things in Leo. It is said that when a Chilin is brought to fight, the sun will lose its light. Guy Girl, we just chilling. Reckoned with an archer with an exception. Literally, attitude for aimed shots. Sheesh. Over cryo lends itself well to high damage burst attacks. While her skills are my god, is that her elemental power. burst? Through That's good. Of training, Ganyu's archery has reached the acme of perfection. She excels at not only using bows but also making them. Though she no longer needs to fight on the front lines. Okay. She still knows bow and arrow like the back of her hand. Gosh. While forging bow type weapons, Ganyu recovers a set percentage of the ores used. Prototype crescent. Okay. Her normal attack can combo up to six consecutive shots, dealing physical damage to enemies. Charging Looks good. Attack executes a more precise shot that deals increased damage. Based on its charge time, the shot generates different effects. Does it? Charge level one fires off an icy arrow that deals cryo damage. Basic. Charge level two fires off AOE. a frost flake arrow that deals yep. cryo damage. Whoa. And blooms after hitting its target, dealing AOE cryo damage. Whoa. Whoa. Frost flake arrow's power is best used against. I like how the the ice attacks interact with the water. After unlocking the talent Undivided Heart, within a set period of time after shooting a Frost Flake arrow, the next Frost Flake arrow and its bloom will receive a crit rate bonus. 
Tap Gun use elemental skill to dash backward, leaving what? an ice lotus in her place that deals cryo damage Ooh. and continuously taunts surrounding enemies, attracting them to attack it. Oh, that's broke. That's when such a good setup. Or once its duration ends, it blooms profusely. Oh, and it blows up. Damage. Very, very good. Ice Lotus's endurance scales based on gun use max HP. Anything that gives you a decoy that this aggro's people is nice. Redirect enemy fire, creating a safe environment for gun you to dish out damage. Blaze over. Woo -hoo! She gun puts the planet in the sky. Frost to summon a sacred cryo pearl. While it's active, the sacred cryo pearl will continuously rain down shards That's of great. ice on enemies within a set area, dealing cryo damage. So if she goes in. Deals damage while serving as a reliable source of cryo that allows gun users. That's a really good setup to too. Corresponding elemental reactions. Look at those big birds. <laughs> Those birds were huge. The talent harmony between heaven and earth with Ganyu and your party. All active party members within Celestial Showers AOE gain a cryo damage bonus. Oof. As an archer, Ganyu knows to keep her enemies at a safe distance and avoid close quarters combat. A constant barrage of Frostflake arrows is what makes her strengths truly shine, leading her to victory. Broke, broke, broke. Y'all ain't playing. She kind of is OP. Look at this. Skill to get out of harm's way Look at this. <laughs> Yo, get her out of the game. <laughs> Dealing damage to groups of the AOE damage is crazy. When her energy is full, Ganyu can unleash her elemental burst to further... She is the AOE queen. When facing more formidable foes together with her allies, Ganyu's ability... No piece of land is untouched. Is an effective form of support for the whole party. Look at this. For defeating enemies in one fell swoop. Stop. Stop. I see what everyone was talking about. She's got a lot of hype, bro. Centuries have passed in the blink of an eye. Ganyu's accompanied Liyue through many a storm. But Liyue Harbor itself. GG. Can this city really become a safe harbor for an adeptus in the world of mortals? When the Geo Archon Morax was alive, an Adeptus like Ganyu could find a sense of belonging in the human city. But at present, when the rite of parting has already marked his end, the loneliness of an inhuman living in the human world will mm. take Ganyu over completely. I will say this, guys. Since we've been watching all these character demos, the teasers, and now the miscellany videos, I feel like I am like hyped up times 10. Like if I would have just started playing this game, I don't think I would have liked it. But now that I've watched all of these and all of those, it's the just been, my hype has been like intense. Game. Even an outsider like Albedo can become chief alchemist of the Knights Albedo of Albedo time! But on the other hand, his mastery of alchemy Albedo, means my no Alfredo. have taken much persuading. I love you. Mondstadt was never a nation known for its alchemy. But since Albedo's arrival, the knight's achievements <laughs> in the field sit only behind those of Sumeru's top scholars. Knights and academics. What a chad. Not two words that one would expect to hear in the same sentence. What a chad. Instead of leading the charge in combat, the calm and collected Albedo is better suited to providing support with reliable geo damage. Okay. Still, his skill set allows him to deal powerful attacks. He's got a plunging attack too. And holds his own on the battlefield. Creation is the basis of alchemy. Albedo's knowledge allows him to find ways to improve crafting recipes and make better use of materials. That sounds really useful, actually. When crafting weapon ascension compared to the other ones I've seen. He has a chance of doubling the crafting output. Albedo's normal attack can combo up to five strikes with his sword. Nice. Holding the attack button consumes a certain amount of stamina and performs two swift forward slashes. Tap his elemental skill to create a solar isotoma using alchemy, dealing area of effect geo damage. A field is created around the solar isotoma. Periodically, when an enemy within the field takes damage, 
A transient blossom is generated at the enemy's location. The transient blossom scales off Albedo's defense, dealing AOE huh? geo damage to surrounding enemies. What? The transient blossom can only be generated once every two seconds. Additionally, making contact with the solar isotoma causes geo energy to accumulate, forming a crystallized platform that lifts the character up to a certain height. Only one platform can exist at a time. What? Strategic use of the crystallized platform lets you employ plunging attacks in battle. Oh! Helps you deal with enemies oh! When That's smart. Those elemental skill to choose the solar isotomas. You can even choose where you put it down. Platform to get past environmental obstacles more quickly. That's so cool. After unlocking the talent calcite might, transient blossoms deal extra damage against enemies with low health. Nice. That's his elemental burst. Crystallized geo energy bursts Ooh. forth at Albedo's command, dealing AOE geo damage in front of Albedo. If Albedo's I love this song, by the way, in the back. Still present on the battlefield. Seven fatal blossoms are generated in the solar isotoma field. Oh my god! Dealing AOE geo damage. What? After unlocking the talent Homuncular Nature, Albedo's elemental burst increases nearby party members' elemental mastery for a period of time. Albedo's skill set is a rare and invaluable asset in combat. I see that. The creative use of the solar isotoma greatly diversifies the battle, paving the party's way to certain victory. When the battle begins, create a solar isotoma with Albedo's elemental skill. Yeah. As he and fellow party members That's attack the setup. enemies inside the solar isotoma field, transient blossoms appear and deal damage to enemies while generating crystal and shields through elemental reactions. Solar Isotoma also enables party this. members to unleash plunge ah! When energy is full, have Albedo unleash an elemental burst, giving Ooh. the whole party a performance boost with increased elemental mastery. <laughs> Fantastic, man. This man's all about the supports. Yeah, his skill is literally no unique. I haven't talent, seen anyone else have that. The have that. Of the knowledge he possesses. It once brought about the destruction of a glorious nation. All that most people know of him is his title, Crida Prince. Crida Prince. And that he gained his position in the Knights on recommendation from Alice the Adventurer. Beyond this, the young man is a stranger to them, a complete mystery. And the essence of his knowledge is equally unknown. But I know it well. It hails from Kanria, the art of Chemia. Soil and chalk, the universe and earth, pure dust and the birth of human life. There is no mistaking it. I am content to watch most crises play out from the sidelines, but if Albeda were ever to make a single wrong move, I could not let myself ignore it. What? Okay, narrator. What's going on with you and Albedo? All right, that's my boy. I'm going to protect Albedo. You better back up. Zhang Li! Finally, dude. To back to back. Traditions, favorite characters right now. Details. Even the most fastidious of academics don't claim to know them all. And yet, the mysterious funeral consultant, Zhang Li, Let's seems go. to know them like the back of his hand. The ancient rite of parting is a most unique tradition. Many details have been lost over time. But Geo Daddy is still able to perform the rite to perfection. That's all we need to know. Geo Daddy. Each ancient tradition inside out. But his own past is shrouded in mystery. Every journey has its final day. Don't rush. <gasps> his Don't voice excels in manipulating Geo able to create and absorb geo matter and provides there it is. shields for his allies. Yep. It's all about defense ability in combat. Woo. Makes him a reliable member of your party. Zhongli seems to know everything about everything, even a simple chunk of white iron ore. He is able to pick out the best ore and use it to maximum effectiveness. Oh wow, now that is really good. Alarms, Zhongli recovers a set percentage of the ores used. Oh, just for pole arms? Interesting. 
Zhang Li's normal attack can combo up to six strikes, dealing physical damage. Oh, the way he kicks it! Hold the attack. He's like, take this. Consume a set amount of stamina <laughs> and lunge forward, casting down stone Whoa. spears across Zhang Whoa. Li's path. The sauce is real. To enemies. Tap Zhang Li's elemental skill to summon the geo energy from within the ground, and form a stone steel, dealing area of effect geo damage to enemies. While the stone steel remains, it will periodically resonate with nearby geo constructs. Nice. Dealing continuous geo damage to surrounding enemies. You can take advantage of this in battle. Draw enemies affected by other elements there we go. towards the stone steel. To both what? Deal geo damage and cause yeah, you have to kite reactions. them over, huh? Use the elemental shield created by Crystallize to help your party survive. Stone nice. steels can also be used to block enemy attacks or climbed to traverse useful terrain. and also useful. Holding Zhong Li's elemental skill causes geo energy around him to explode. Nice. Jade shield and dealing area of effect geo damage. The Jade shield absorbs damage. The Look at that. You can't touch him. With Zhong Li's max HP and is higher That's against perfect. enemies geo attacks. If Zhong Li is surrounded by targets <laughs> that chameleon thing was cute. A large amount of geo energy from up to two of them. This effect Whoa. does not deal damage, but can effectively break down enemies' geo armor. Nice. And nearby ore deposits. Whoa. After unlocking the talent resonant wave, talk about a short a, a shortcut to mining. Damage, it will fortify your character, allowing their shield to absorb more damage. This is oil. And there it is! Zhong Yay! Can bring a huge meteor crashing down. Oh! Geo damage oh boy! Look at that, man! Petrified Absolutely fantastic! Mobile. After unlocking the talent Dominance of Earth, Planet Befall deals additional damage to enemies. Whoa! Which scales with Zhang Li's max HP. That's pretty Zhang cool. Li maintains his composure, even as he meets out punishment in battle. His exceptional ability to provide support and deal damage makes him quite prepared for any scenario. Yeah, I mean, I don't see a flaw in his As character. The fight begins. First, use Zhong Li's elemental skill Put up the wall. Stone steel Go in on him. Near it, yep, yep, yep. Environment for yep. Damage. Use your talent. Next, a Look at this. Shield to absorb incoming damage. Then, Can't take no damage. Normal and charged attacks. Ooh, stringing ooh. together attacks to deal enormous damage. What can, full, what can you do? What can you do, baby? Coordinate your party's attacks to wipe out the That's enemy. the first time I've seen the MC do Our anything in these. Harbor grows restless on the eve of disaster. As the host of the Rite of Parting, Zhong Li still calmly goes about his work. The world around him may be descending into chaos, yet he remains unperturbed, sipping his tea and watching a good show. <laughs> Quite the fascinating character. Yes. As Leo child faces the turbulence of change, does he believe it is none of his business? Or is he also a player in this game, acting behind the scenes? You're a traitor? It may be some time before the answers finally emerge. But no matter, for time is not something I lack. I hope the next one is child, bro. That would just be back to back W's. Oh no, actually we already saw child, didn't we? No, we didn't. I don't think we did. Zong Lee, man, fire. <laughs> Geo Daddy. He just seems really overpowered. If you have him, yeah, it is so back to back. Let's go. We're on our Drake today. To make waves wherever they go in Tavat. And Tartaglia is a driving force within them. Back to back. Of the harbingers, 10 concern themselves with clandestine operations. Tartaglia is the sole exception. Oh, I was thinking of Toma. Why do I get Toma and him mixed up? He prefers to face them head on in one on one combat. The wind is picking up. There is conflict in the air. Jeez. His reputation precedes him. Child is known far and wide as a fearsome warrior. He looks like it. Well versed in a variety of fighting forms. He's got the bow he and the pole arm. Will. Whoa! The dual blades? Of attack at his disposal. When Tartaglia is in your party, all characters' normal attacks gain one level. Oh, that's wild. Increased damage as a result. 
Tartaglia That's is really good. with a bow. So he chooses to use one precisely to overcome this weakness. His normal attack can combo up to six consecutive oh my gosh. shots. Charging the attack executes a more precise shot that deals increased damage. Woo! While aiming, hydro energy accumulates on the arrowhead. A fully charged arrow will deal hydro damage to enemies on impact and also apply the Riptide status to them. When an enemy is affected by Riptide, further hits from Tartaglia's fully charged arrows deal multiple bouts of area of effect hydro damage. Also, when Tartaglia defeats an enemy affected by Riptide, it causes a Hydro Burst, which applies the Riptide status to nearby enemies. <laughs> Unlocking the talent never ending extends the duration of Riptide. Faced with a strong foe, Tartaglia ah, has got his dual blades. When he casts his elemental skill, he summons weaponry fashioned from pure hydro, dealing hydro damage Ooh. to surrounding enemies in the process, and also switches to his melee stance. In what? Stance, what? His normal attack now combos up to six consecutive Ooh. hydro slashes. Let's go! Charging Look at this! Attack, consumes stamina and releases a two slash flurry. Whoa! Hydro damage. In melee stance, when Tartaglia strikes an enemy affected by Riptide, he deals area of effect hydro damage. Tartaglia exits melee stance when his elemental skill is cast again. Dear Lord! After a certain time has elapsed, he then he like transforms them into a spear. That's cool. And his elemental skill enters cooldown. Nice. The longer Tartaglia spends in melee stance, the longer the cooldown time. Oh, After so you don't want to use it too long sometimes. Torrents, when in melee stance, if Tartaglia deals a critical hit, the Riptide status is applied to the enemy. Nice. Depending on Tartaglia's stance, his Does he have two different? burst will unleash one of two different attacks. What? It's two different elemental bursts? Riptide. Nice. In ranged stance, Tartaglia swiftly nice. fires a hydro imbued magic arrow ahead of him, which deals area of effect hydro damage. That looks good. And also applies the Riptide status to enemies. Afterwards, Tartaglia regains some of his spent energy. Shouldn't let your guard down. In melee stance, Tartaglia performs a slashing attack with a wide area of effect, dealing substantial hydro yes! damage to all surrounding enemies. I love it! Hits an enemy affected by uh. riptide. The riptide effect will be consumed in a hydro explosion, which deals. That's my dog. Damage. Tartaglia is a formidable warrior who lives for the heat of battle. He chooses his moments to attack and retreat, and is tactical when selecting his mode of attack. This is what makes him so powerful. I see that. <laughs> Faced with a single opponent. Start by firing at them from a distance to apply the Riptide status. Then enter melee stance and go in for the yep, kill. Yep, go in. Use fast and frequent attacks to trigger Get in there. effects and deal immense damage. Cooldown time? Oh wait, Against stop. Against groups of enemies, build up energy in advance. Here we go. And unleash an elemental burst in ranged stance. Yep. To apply the Boom. Riptide status to the group. Get him in Riptide, go into the melee stance. Then enter melee stance. We're gonna hit him with another elemental burst. Affected by Riptide. Hacking away at their health while also restoring yeah, they're getting destroyed. Energy. Wait for an opportune moment to unleash there it another is. elemental burst and take them all out in one go. Fantastic, man. To a clear cut conclusion. Clear cut conclusion. Like he said, you know where Tartaglia acquired his fighting skills. I have no idea. Becoming a harbinger. Nor do many know where his lust for combat originates. There is a dangerous secret to the martial legacy he inherits. But it is one that even he himself does not fully understand. Since becoming a Fatui Harbinger, fighting for the Tsaritsa is his Tsaritsa. new motivation as a warrior. Child is the Tsaritsa's weapon of war, and he stands for the might of Snezhnaya. Oh, that's why they call him Child. Is starting to blow towards the other nations. Brace yourselves. Tevat is about to get cold. <laughs> Because um, when I saw his character teaser, people were calling him uh, child. And I was like, who is this person that everyone keeps talking about? So then when I went into the character teasers, 
the name on it was Child, so I thought it was a different character that looked similar to him. I got so confused. But... Everyone in Liyue knows it is Rex Lapis who protects their borders. But the city's daily affairs are run by the Qixing. Qixing? As you hung of the Qixing, Kuching acts decisively... Kuching, Kuching! Knowing every inch of Liyue like the back of her I don't head. remember seeing her. Of Liyue. She has much to say about Rex Lapis's unilateral governance. We Not a big fan of her design. Change, as the old order that has existed for a thousand years is about to be rewritten. Within the Qixing, Kuching is one for action. Ruthless efficiency is her modus operandi. Like her personality, her sword work is both swift and uncomfortable. Wait, I may... This, along with her control... Oh, wait, I, I spoke too soon. Hold on. Oh, sh... I spoke too soon. I'm sorry. Even on long journeys, I'm like, I don't like her that much. I don't like her design. I don't like her design. But, man. If dispatched on her combat is kind of dope. She will complete it more quickly than most. Kuching can unleash a combo of up to five normal attacks. Oh! Her final strike allowing her to pass through. Oh, who's. Yun Lai swordsmanship is both offensive and defensive, offering a way to dodge Dear Lord. and strike back from a better angle. Go get out of there. Hold the attack button to consume stamina and release a two slash flurry, dealing high physical damage. Nice. Tap Kuching's elemental but this is what's cool. Restoration to throw a lightning stiletto, which deals electro damage to enemies in a small area upon. Oh, that's so cool. Behind a lightning stiletto marker. If Kuching uses stellar restoration again while the marker is still present, she flies to the marker and performs a quick slash, Ooh. dealing electro AOE damage. Fire! Stellar restoration allows Kuching to aim the lightning stiletto before releasing it. Adept use of the lightning stiletto produces various results. With the lightning stiletto, that's cool. Flash into battle and, and she has a plunge attack. Position. The lightning stiletto can also be used in exploration to navigate challenges. And she has a light uh, plunging attack, Kuching man. Can also clear the lightning stiletto with the Kuching, charge attack, Kuching. causing a slashing thunderstorm. We're out here. AOE damage at its location. Deft use of this skill allows Kuching to creatively deal ranged damage. After unlocking the talent Thundering Penance, using oh my gosh. while the lightning stiletto is present, converts Kuching's normal and charged attacks to electro damage for a short time. Girl, slow down. Look at that elemental burst, though. Kuching unleashes her electro power, causing electro AOE damage. My gosh, she's everywhere. Hiding behind the shadow of her sword. Boom, 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 boom. She's surrounding enemies at lightning Ooh. speed, dealing multiple rounds of damage. With a final burst of electro AOE damage at the end. After unlocking the talent Aristocratic Dignity, casting Starward Sword increases Kuching's crit rate and energy reach oh, wow. for a period of time. Her design is so boring, though. And leaving no shadow, Kuching is a sharp addition to any team, groups of enemies, or single opponents. She's like that. No match for a well-executed. That tropey purple-haired bad girl, you know. The key to combat with Kuching is mastery of the. You see him in all animes. First, use her elemental skill to place the stiletto. Then, use her elemental skill again to zip into battle and strike quickly. Follow up with more electro damage using okay. the elemental skill to suppress the enemy and continue to use the lightning stiletto at opportune moments to frequently move and attack. Whoa! That was a good dodge. Rapidly accumulate energy. She's going in. Once full, it is time to unleash Starward Sword. Bam. And bring the fight to a perfect end. That's a wrap. Pack it up. History is to be written by the people. Even without the protection of the gods, Liyue would flourish as always. This is Kuching's belief. This desire to take fate into her own hands. I remember this feeling. Will she be able to bring her vision to life?
to protect this land she calls home. I think so. In the hands With of powers the like that? Where is Liu headed? The road ahead is unclear, but we shall wait and see. I should do a poll. I should do a poll on like what's everyone's favorite Genshin character. You know what? Say it in the comment. If you made it this far into the video, tell me who your favorite character is in Genshin Impact. I'd really like to know. Mona! The stars illuminate all mortal destinies. By the way, if you've made it this far, thank you. Their meaning. But Mona, an astrologist newly arrived in Mondstadt, is able to read the fates of others through stars oh, reflected in the wall. She's so pretty. But while no phenomenon is hidden from the astrologist Mona, she struggles often with the minutia of daily life. It is a most common predicament. The more you seek truth, the more simple joys elude you. <laughs> this was ordained by fate. Long had I foreseen it. I think she's like the one of the most overdrawn characters I've ever seen. As a hydro Because when I wasn't even looking at Genshin content and stuff, I would see her all the time. The like people drawing her in very sexual ways. Teammates to attack. As a student of all things in and under the night sky, Mona also has a strong grasp of weapon construction. Oh, nice. In truth, she finds that most weapons are wastefully made. When she crafts weapon ascension materials, she has a chance to recover a portion of the materials. Yeah, used. she doesn't. She doesn't waste. Mona's she ain't about the waste in life. Performs up to four strikes that deal hydro damage. Holding the attack button consumes a set amount of stamina and deals area of effect hydro damage after a short casting time. Nice. Mona creates a phantom of fate from coalesced water. This phantom taunts nearby enemies and deals continuous hydro damage to them. The phantom explodes when its duration expires, dealing area of effect hydro damage to enemies. Holding the elemental skill button causes Mona to ride a flow of water backwards and summon her phantom. This skill has many applications. <laughs> that thing's so cool, though. <laughs> can be used to taunt enemies, making them wet and priming them for attacks. Making them wet. Attacks. <laughs> it can also help her out of a pinch. Yeah, that, that looks cool. When Mona sprints, she cloaks herself in flowing water, Woo! consuming stamina to move rapidly. Ending this skill causes Mona to emerge, getting nearby enemies wet. <laughs> Illusory torrent. We're making everyone wet when we're Mona. Travel swiftly over water. <laughs> That's so cool. Once her talent is unlocked, Mona can create a phantom automatically if she maintains <laughs> this skill for a certain period of time with an enemy nearby. I like how the water is extinguishing the fire. Fate on the ground. Whoa, it's like Mona a prism. Summons sparkling waves and creates a reflection of the starry sky. Whoa, whoa, Applying whoa, that's so cool. Illusory bubble statuses onto all enemies in the area. When affected by illusory bubble, weaker enemies will be imprisoned and unable uh, to Ah, the constellations on them look so cool. imprisoned enemies removes that status from them. What? Deals an instance of hydro damage. When the status is cleared, the enemy comes under an omen. Under an omen. Enemies affected by an omen take more damage. Oh, well, that's good. On the ever-changing battlefield, Mona's capacity for control cannot be overlooked. This astrologist aids her team at critical moments, controlling the field and maximizing her teammates' damage. Sheesh! As the battle begins, she first summons a phantom. There it is. Taunts enemies and lets her switch out. Using the opening created to cooperate with her teammates. D Lou killing it! Damage to enemies. She uses these combined techniques to control enemies, allowing the party to damage them safely. Whoa! Right, Whoa! What are those fire things? And attacks them to trigger damage bonus effects. This way, she can defeat the weakened enemies before her all in good time. She went in. But what were those little fire? What were those like Mona's snakes or something? Mona's is indeed unique. No one can deny her intelligence and talent. Within Mondstadt, there are few who possess the ability and a desire to seek truth equal to hers. But beware, O oh young seeker. 
You must sacrifice your all to unravel the world's secrets. Can the astrologist Mona truly bear such a burden? The sky, the night nice sky in this game, like in certain areas, is pretty. She's got like one of the coolest designs. She's like really unique looking, you know? Probably one of my favorite character designs in the game. For sure. I mean, she seemed all right. I don't think she's OP per se, but she seemed all right. Chi Chi! Children as special as Chi Chi are few and far between. As a zombie, <laughs> a zombie, time has no effect on her, but she has difficulty committing things to memory. Yeah, uh, you and me both. Perhaps this is a good thing. She can forget her past and be an herb gatherer at Boo Boo Pharmacy. Boo Boo Pharmacy? What are they Those selling there? Estimate her just for a <laughs> child. Do so at their peril. I am Chi Chi. I am a zombie, and I. Forgot what comes next. <laughs> She's cute though. With her mastery over Cryo, Chi Chi is a powerful asset. Wait! Despite her size, I know who that is. Others. It's a YouTuber Chi -Chi or a streamer. Will always feel safe. When gathering herbs, she always knows where to find them. I'd have to hear her voice again. A notebook with her that has all their locations marked. But I'm pretty Let's sure I've heard that voice lost. before on either Twitch or YouTube. With Chi Chi on your team, the mini map will show areas where plants unique to Liyue grow, making it easier to gather certain resources. Chi Chi's normal attack can combo up to five slashes, dealing nice. physical damage to enemies. Holding the attack button consumes She's so small. stamina and releases a two slash flurry, dealing high <laughs> physical damage. Using Chi Chi's elemental skill, what she got Frost, though? Okay, cryo damage to surrounding enemies. A little thing is doing its thing. You got to be close to people though. Dealing damage along the way. Okay, so everybody also gets it. Healing the current character, period. And it heals. Okay. While Herald of Frost is active, normal and charged attack hits. Even the people in the party, it heals. And Whoa. By a set amount based on Chi Chi's attack. That's kind of fire. Not only does this increase the team's endurance, it also allows you to dominate the enemy when paired with Hydro. Oh, oh. Is also useful during exploration. Oh, nice. Using it to oh, nice. Is a sound strategy for conserving stamina. That's smart. After unlocking the talent life prolonging methods, when a character under the influence of Adeptus Art Herald of Frost triggers an elemental reaction, incoming healing is increased. Sacred name, Fortune Preserver. When Chi Chi releases the Adeptal power sealed inside herself, she marks nearby enemies with That's a, a really good elemental burst and deals cryo damage to them. When enemies marked with fortune preserving talismans take damage, the character dealing the damage is healed. By choosing an opportune moment to use Adeptus Art Preserver, that's a good way to set people up. Yep. Switch into Amber, D Luke. D D Luke's gonna do all the damage. After unlocking the talent, a glimpse into Arcana, normal and charged attack hits have a chance to tag enemies with a fortune preserving talisman once per set time period. Chi Chi has the ability to constantly heal, an excellent safeguard that helps keep your team alive. The more difficult the battle, the more apparent Chi Chi's assistance becomes. When entering battle, first use Herald of Frost to allow your team to deal constant cryo damage. Yeah. And easily trigger elemental reactions. For you want her damage. off the field as much as the possible. Of Herald of Frost will keep your team Let your DPS handle it. Until the right moment comes to unleash an elemental burst. And then come in. Yep. Allowing your team to safely unleash and go back to the DPS the and go in. Yeah, she's all about Chi -Chi supporting. Escaped the grip of both time and death. How Chi Chi entered this state of existence, I do not know. I think this video, but these I videos are gonna help me like her own learn how to build these characters. Are the heavenly principles toying with her, or is fate seeking to torture her? Is an ordinary life of simple pleasures really a thing so fragile? Yay! I know you're a streamer. I just don't know who, Chi Chi. I feel like it's Lily Pichu. Might be wrong on that, though. I feel like that's the voice actor for her.
Gene. Gene's probably crazy when strong. When Master Varka of Mondstadt's Knights of Favonius left on an expedition, his role passed to Jean, the eldest daughter of House Gunhilder. Oh, she's the Gunhilder the girl. The Grandmaster had become a skilled swordsman through hard work and works harder still for the sake of the knights. Self-sacrifice, after all, is the Dandelion Knight's path. <laughs> As the wind continues to blow, so too shall I continue to fight. All Gene she's good for is putting Cleet to bed. Support abilities ...and can act in concert with others to suppress the enemy. Jean's elemental burst can instantly restore her health and benefit her allies as well, making her the pillar of... This music's really good for her. Even when cooking, Jean is always concerned with helping others and can accidentally make extra helping. Accidentally. When hey, cooks are restored nothing wrong with that. She has a chance to create two of them. All the better to face the battles ahead. Jean can perform up to five consecutive normal attacks, dealing physical damage to enemies. Yo, look at her uh, heels. A set amount of stamina, and Those things is fire. Thrust that deals high physical Ooh. Damage and launches enemies. Ooh. Enemies will fall slowly for a short time. Okay, that's a good setup. To control the flow of battle. Yes. And give her teammates a chance to perform follow-up attacks. Exactly, exactly. Unlocking the talent Wind Companion gives Jean's normal attacks a chance to heal all party members on hit. This heal what? scales with Jean's attack power. Tapping her elemental skill Gale Blade causes Jean what? to gather formless wind on her sword and unleash a small storm, launching enemies Ooh. in the direction Jean is aiming, dealing animo damage. That's cool. Holding Gale Blade constantly consumes Jean's stamina. Look at that, you can even aim it. Nearby enemies <laughs> And allowing her to Holy adjust the direction in which she wishes to launch them, dealing animo. That is awesome, man. Enemies launched by Gale Blade will remain clumped together when they fall, making that's another good setup. Easier. Gale Blade is a very Let's throw them off the cliff, yeah. Strategic use of the surrounding Woo! terrain will often amplify. Bye bye. Wind, hear me. Calling upon the wind's protection, Jean creates a dandelion field, knocking nearby enemies back and dealing animal damage. Bring the them in, and then you can bring them in. Oh. Nearby allies and party members. This healing scales with Jean's attack power. The dandelion field continuously heals characters within it, infusing them with anima, while dealing animal damage to enemies who enter or leave the field. Once the talent Let the Wind Lead is unlocked, using Dandelion Field will regenerate some additional elemental energy. Jean can help her team take charge, aid in their attacks, and do great damage through skillful use of her abilities. Yeah, I knew she was all about damage. A well-rounded fighter indeed. Start the battle by using her elemental skill. There it Mop is. Up nearby <laughs> enemy groups and Mop them up. Energy. Then use her charged attack to disrupt their movements, allowing your party members to switch in, attack, and deal damage. When your party members have taken significant damage, use her elemental burst at the opportune moment to repel enemies and regenerate your team's health before beginning the next round of attacks to finish the fight. That's a good heal healer. Experience. Mondstadt is only prosperous. I almost said Hilder. <laughs> Varka's great responsibilities. Even I, who has seen countless people, must respect her desire to always defend Mondstadt. But unlike most who bear great burdens, this young knight has remained as tenacious as ever. How was her will molded, and what sustains her edge such that it never wears down? If fate wills it, I will find the answer to these questions. She's like beautiful. You know what I mean? Like you look at her, and all you can say to yourself is, wow. <laughs> I love Jean. Oh, we got clean, jumpy dumpty. There are many remarkable <laughs> people in Mondstadt's Knights of Favonius. <laughs> Among them is a small knight who raised Stormbearer Mountains. <laughs> and whose name has recently become- Oh my God, she's so adorable. Oh, big damage. When it comes to Jumpy Spark Dumpy, Knight I'm gone. There are rumors aplenty. Interestingly, those telling these rumors do so with a smirk and a shake of their heads. Bro, Klee is the is the Joking cleanup crew. Mondstadt's fish have learned to swim away when they see her. 
Wait, what? Play with you today? Please? I want to go on an adventure. Aww. As the Spark Knight. Adorable. Glee is able to deal continuous pyro damage. That little sister energy. Childlike glee. And a pack and pockets full of bombs. But watch out. As anything near her may be turned to ash in a fiery explosion. Klee loves adventures and is adept at expeditions and gathering. Not only does she know the locations of Mondstadt's unique flora, she may also know where to find a treasure or two. When Klee is on your team, the location you can see treasure everywhere. Unique to Mondstadt will appear on your mini map. We seen it. We seen it. When it comes to anything explosive. Klee simply can't control Can you fish defense. like that? That'd be kind of cool. Attack performs up to three consecutive explosive attacks that deal AOE pyro damage. Holding the attack button consumes a certain amount of stamina, and after a short casting time, blasts Whoa. enemies, dealing AOE pyro damage. When Klee is up high, her charged attack can reach enemies even farther away. Also, Klee's normal and charged attacks are especially effective against geo targets. Nice! You can blow the, the shields and stuff right off them. And for quickly mining ore. After unlocking the talent's sparkling burst, when Klee's charged attack lands a critical hit, some energy will be restored for all party members. Woohoo! Use Klee's elemental skill to talk. Her attacks are so slow though. Jumpy Dumpty will bounce three times. Each bounce causing an explosion that deals AOE pyro damage. On the third bounce, Jumpy Dumpty will burst into mines. These explode upon contact with enemies. Oh, that's cool. Time, dealing AOE pyro damage. Jumpy Dumpty will automatically recharge over time to up to two charges. Then it has a it cooldown. Effective in dealing with groups of enemies. After Jumpy Dumpty explodes, switch characters and pull enemies together to take advantage of the mines and deal a lot of damage. That's to smart, yeah. I was thinking that with Gene After too. Unlocking the talent pounding surprise, when Jumpy Dumpty and normal attacks deal damage, Klee has a chance to obtain an explosive spark. When Klee has an explosive spark, instead of consuming stamina, her next charged attack will expend the spark instead and deal increased damage. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Blow them all up. Please blazing delight. Sparks and that looks continuously attacks useful. nearby enemies for the duration of the skill. Unlike some of the other smaller characters, well, Nahida was really good, but I feel like she's probably one of the better like attacking wise. Empowering Klee to deal immense damage while on the battlefield. Klee is able to continuously dish out strong pyro attacks, earning her a role as the firepower of your party. Next, Let's look at a battle to experience Klee's incredible destructive capability. All right, let's In do battle, it. Klee can use her elemental skill and normal attacks to repeatedly activate the effect of the talent. Look at that. There's so much stuff on the field that the enemies can trip over. Enemies. When her energy is full, unleash an <laughs> elemental burst to further increase there it is. her ability to deal damage. After this, Klee can have fun causing explosions, spreading flames in every direction, and burning enemies to a crisp. She's fun against really small enemies, the pretty much. Of Mondstadt talk about their home. They proudly call it the City of Wind, Dandelions, and Freedom. Perhaps it was Mondstadt's atmosphere of freedom that led the famous adventurer Alice to entrust her daughter Klee to the care we of We heard Alice about Alice Alice. earlier! With this freedom, Klee has had a happy That's her mom? strange childhood. But all baby birds must leave oh. the nest someday. Hopefully our little spark knight will remain just as happy go lucky when so wait. that day comes. That that narrator Klee's earlier, was that Alice? Talking? Was that Klee's mom? Because in an Aloy's trailer, you heard her talking and she said something about Hmm, interesting. Klee Obviously, as we just saw, Klee is adorable. Very slow at attacking, but deals good damage, it seems like. He's all about alcohol. Modest and refined, yet quick to act whenever Mondstadt faces a crisis. Ooh. What caused him to choose this path? Hmm. Spoilers. There must be those who dare to pierce the darkness with their light. 
As one who wields pyro and a claymore. Yeah, dude, claymores are dude, awesome. I was waiting for somebody who had one. That thing is crazy that. cool. All right, what what were the things that came out of the ground that breathed fire? Is that his element? Oh, dude. What the f was that? ruthless strikes. Homie summons a firebird. Born a noble, <laughs> D Luke is well versed in all things swords. We see With that. Guidance, no metal ore is wasted in their making. When forging claymores, D Luke recovers a set percentage of the ores used, aiding greatly in your adventure. Oh yeah, that's D -Luke's really good aid. Attack performs up to four consecutive strikes. He's got four strikes though. Launching enemies. Holding the attack button constantly consumes D Luke's stamina to launch swift consumption. Like how he attacks, switches hands dealing and goes in physical damage to nearby enemies. Oh my god! An extra powerful attack at the end. That attack that is crazy. Enemies. Use this wisely to scatter enemy groups and defeat shielded foes. Unlock it breaks right through shields. Decreases D Luke's charged attack stamina consumption. And oh nice. Its he can duration. just keep going. Use his fierce attacks to defeat those before you. Using the elemental skill Searing Onslaught, D Luke strikes with his Claymore, dealing pyro damage. That's cool. This can be done three times in a row, with a short window of time to connect each strike. Oh. But pay attention. This skill enters cooldown if the next strike is not activated in a short Oh, uh, so you gotta you gotta hurry up. Using Searing Onslaught in concert with normal attacks allows you to deal constant damage to enemies. Dude, he is all Both damage, man. And mobile. Additionally, since this skill deals pyro damage, D Luke can form combinations with other characters using elemental reactions to deal greater damage. Elemental reactions? Surrounding himself in flames, D Luke not Elemental reactions is such a cool game mechanic. Gathering the flames into his blade and launching a phoenix, dealing massive pyro damage to enemies in its path. D Luke's normal and charged attacks will also deal pyro damage for a period of time. Dawn has a very large hitbox, allowing it to not only strike airborne foes, but also forcibly reposition enemies to an extent, making it very strong against groups. Oh, wow. The pyro damage conversion that Dawn provides further strengthens... Just Luke's go in. Attacks. Unlocking the Blessing of Phoenix talent increases the duration of Dawn's pyro damage conversion and gives D Luke a pyro damage bonus. Woo! It doesn't even matter if the bird hits or not. You get that damage up. Who efficiently deals with any task. Now, please witness him in action. I know he's going to go in. Begin suppressing the target with normal attacks. Yep. Combining it with his elemental skill to go into it. Pyro damage to the enemy. Oh. He weaves between these two attack modes to suppress the foe more quickly. Nice. While building up elemental energy. There it is, the burst. His elemental burst once his energy is full, followed by attacks enhanced by blessing of Phoenix. Look at this! Look at this! Look at this! Defeating the enemy flawlessly. Wow! Luke's explosive, ruthless fighting style and his aloof manner are all admirable traits. But if the disaster from five centuries ago were to happen again, if he were to face the same evil that I once did, would he still hold fast to his resolve? He's got to be a fan favorite, man. Makes me most curious indeed. What a great character. But he's got to be a fan favorite. They were showing a lot of cutscenes there, I saw. You know what I mean? Like, with a lot of these characters, they haven't shown too many cutscenes, but with him, they were they were giving it all of it to Venti? Venti? I forgot! Yes! Venti has recently appeared in the world. Singing tales for the city of freedom and romance. This city is Mondstadt. The dragon. The, of the north. That's Vinti's friend. With no ruler. This once bitter cold land in the north of Tevat is now fertile. A blessing left by the god of Animo, they say. A thousand years have passed since the god of Animo left this land. But to me, it has only been half that time. Come on, traveler. Let's go. Green boy. Full of lost ballads, just waiting to be rediscovered. I love the wink. It's adorable. As an archer with the power of Animo, Venti can battle with ease in almost any environment. 
His versatile attack style and his ability to launch enemies with his elemental skill allow for a high amount of mobility in battle. He shoots fast. His unique elemental burst can pull together nearby enemies. Whoa! Making oh my god, the elemental reactions there! Deal damage and control Woo! the battle. When Venti is in your party, gliding consumes less stamina for all characters. That's useful. Needless to say, this skill will come in handy on your adventures. Take Venti along when exploring the beautiful open world. <laughs> the way he flies. So cute. Normal attacks can perform up to six consecutive shots. He is fast, the man. Shots can fire an extra arrow. While the sixth shot deals greater damage. Hold the attack button to use a more powerful aimed shot. Oh, wow. Fully charged, an animo infused arrow is fired and deals even more damage to the enemy. Call upon the wind on which hymns and songs fly. Ah. To lift your enemies up into the sky. Ah. Use the elemental skill, Sky. The poetry. Song, Venti summons a wind domain at the enemy's location. Dealing Get him up in the air. Effect animo damage. Enemies Shoot are him. launched into the air and fall slowly to the ground. Hold Skyward Sonnet to summon an even larger wind domain around Venti. This flies up! That's perfect to like switch to a different character and plunge attack on him. Venti also uses this powerful wind to fly. If you can, that is. I don't know. I haven't played it yet. The use of this skill not only allows you to attack enemies. Seems like you could. But also dodge attacks and move around the environment. Oh, that was cool. Okay. If the opportunity presents itself, you can also use a plunging Oh, he has a plunging attack already. Wind domains. See? I'm ahead of the game. After unlocking the talent Embrace of Winds, holding Skyward Sonnet will also create a temporary upcurrent as you fly into the air. By firing an arrow infused with coalesced winds, Venti creates a fierce storm. Now this was cool when they showed it earlier i was like whoa look at that and deals just pulls damage. everyone in contact with hydro pyro cryo or electro elements yeah we saw that earlier storm to absorb that element and deal additional elemental damage the storm can only absorb one element each time ah figured after unlocking the talent storm eye venti's energy will be replenished at the end of wind's grand ode if an element was absorbed, the energy of party members of that element will also be replenished. Oh, that's cool. Even though Venti is more than capable of handling different obstacles in battle, strategic party selection and teamwork can help you maximize Venti's abilities. I bet you could build a solid team around him. First, use divine archery to attack enemies from afar and whittle away at their health. Use Skyward Sonnet to launch dangerous Okay, Kaya and him seem like a good team. Gather up energy to prepare for the final attack. When your Whoa. energy is full, unleash your elemental burst. There it is. Wind's grand there it is. Sucks the Bam! In and deals animo damage. Even the big guy. Element on enemies in the storm to generate a swirl reaction. Ha ha! Then use another compatible element to cause an elemental reaction. Yeah. Causing another elemental reaction brings the battle to a swift end. Element after element after element after element. It's going As in. We all know, poetry and language flow like the wind. Venti captures this spirit in his ballads. Flora and fauna he sings of seem to have a life of their own and transport us to the moon and the stars. This self-proclaimed best bard of the mortal world. Best bard. Gets his strength, <laughs> his unwithering inspiration. The best bard. From the wind. But what Venti seeks in life is not eternal fame for his ballads. It's being the Rather best bard. Be happy with a cup of wine. Oh, is he old enough to drink wine? To sing the marvelous stories of the world. Yes. That would make Venti the Bard very content indeed. Is he old enough to, to drink alcohol? <laughs> he doesn't look like it. He looks like he's like 13. 
14. Okay, guys. So since I know that these playlists for the official Genshin channel is scuffed as heck, they're usually really scuffed. I checked, I double checked, and it doesn't look like we missed anybody. I don't think we did. So I think we have watched all of the collected miscellany videos. Thank God we got through all of them. There was a ton of them. I feel like I know so much more about the game combat wise. So going into this, I feel like I'm actually going to understand like what's going on. And I, I kind of feel like I have a little bit of knowledge of on how to build because they kind of tell you what each character is really good at. So I feel like as long as you build towards those strengths of each character, building is not too hard, right? But we'll have to see when we get into the game. I don't know. I'm probably not going to be the best builder and I don't really care to be the best builder either because it's a PVE game. It's not PVP. So I mean, what's the point really other than like, hey, look how much damage I do. Isn't that cool? But other than that, I really appreciate you guys for watching these videos with me. I can't wait to get into the game in the next video. Hopefully you guys watch that hit that like button if you haven't already comment down below your thoughts on the video give me any advice tips whatever you want down below i read all of the comments and also subscribe if you're new i'll see you guys in the next one have an amazing day deuces hope will never die Orale.